Welcome to the Cisco Telepresence VCS System Configuration Video Guide. My name is Michael McGeary, a product manager within the Cisco Telepresence Systems Business Unit. Uh, this is the continuation of six videos which will guide you through the basic configuration of a VCS. This is part 2B, Dial Plans. So let's go ahead and start with our uh, system status overview page. Uh, like we have in the previous sections and we're going to go to VCS configuration and this time we're going to go to dial plan. Underneath dial plan we have four different configurations that we can uh, access and we're going to start with configuration. Underneath configuration we have an indirect calls to known uh, unknown IP addresses. Now we previously had created a subzone with membership rules for subnets those RFC 19 addresses that we configured in subzone membership rules now are considered known IP addresses. Therefore, if we send a call to a 192.168.1.1 uh, IP address, that would actually be within the known IP address range, and therefore it would try to do a call setup directly to that particular IP address and it would not go indirectly to a, v a VCS expressway uh, or firewall traversal server. We can also configure a fallback alias. This is where we might want to actually have a fallback alias of maybe uh, info at uh, the domain, and we can configure that. Now, uh, we might want to actually take uh, this default uh, fallback alias is actually for inbound dialed calls to this VCS. This is probably better put on the VCS Expressway, although you can actually do this to the VCS control as well. Uh, info at cisco.com may be an IP gateway of some type, uh, like in a video IVR, or you could actually take and forward that to an MCU. Uh, so maybe um, if, if the IP address of the VCS Expressway is dialed, uh, it's sent to an MCU. Underneath the dial plan, we're going to go to transforms. Now, transforms you should be very, very careful of. Only do a minimum amount of transforms. These are global in nature and apply to all dialing rules. So if you perform a transform, a transform is done before any searches occur to any of the local zones or remote zones. So you want to be very careful not to do a lot of these. I typically like to take and put three different global transforms in. One is on the page right now. What this particular global transform does is it actually transforms an IP address at a domain into just the IP address. This is using regular expressions and we're basically saying I want to have a one to three digits dot one to three digits dot one to three digits dot one to three digits at the domains our locally configured domains those would be my local domains that are configured under the SIP configuration so now that we've done that that allows a Mobi client perhaps to actually type an IP address into the Mobi client directly the Mobi client and lots of other SIP clients will automatically add the domain for which it's configured if a domain is not specified and therefore this accomplishes converting an IP address from the IP address at domain into just the IP address. The next configuration that I want to do is I want to create another global transform to say if it does not include a domain add one and in this case I'm going to go ahead and add a transform I'm going to use a regular expression for this so the description is going to be if no domain add domain. I'm going to use a regular expression and my pattern string is going to be open parenthesis open bracket square bracket caret at close square bracket splat or star and close paren we're going to replace that with a backslash one at a domain and we're also going to specify to be enabled and we're going to create the transform 
Okay, now we've created two transforms. We're going to add one more transform, which is one I like to add on the VCS Expressway specifically. Uh, you can add it to the VCS control as well. This particular transform, what it is going to do is when we receive call using just the IP address, so just a call setup message was sent uh, directly using an IP address instead of a domain name, then what we're going to take is we're going to convert that into a domain name. And specifically, the regular expression that we're going to use in this case is going to be uh, caret open paren dot star close paren at and then I'm going to open a paren. I'm going to use a special environment variable here, which is IP version 4 with a pipe, which means or IPv6 close paren. And then I'm going to open a paren again, a dot star and a close paren. The third parenthesis set, which is the dot star at the end, actually is for additional parameters that may be included on top of the IP address. So maybe a colon port number, or maybe we might have a colon port number, semicolon something um, in the dial string. So we're going to go ahead and include that. Therefore, our replace will be backslash 1, which is the first parenthesis, at cisco.com. And then in this case, we're going to do a backslash 3. And that will include, if there is something else, we'll go ahead and include that in the dial. Um, I'm going to put this as a priority 2. Um, and I'm going to create the transform. So now we have three global transforms, and that's all we need. We shouldn't really be adding much more than this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to dial plan, and then we're going to go to search rules. Uh, the search rules are where we can actually tell it how things are dialed. And, um, and in this case, I have a couple uh, search rules already. It looks like one was accidentally configured. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. Uh, this local zone is one that's automatically created uh, for you. And this will dial only aliases for which an actual match occurs. However, there are a number of different things that we may want to take it, um, and search for on top of this one. One that comes to mind is if I'm making calls from a SIP client, a SIP client is usually going to add the domain. If I take and add the domain, and I'm using an E164 address on H.323, that means that I cannot actually make a call to an E164 address. Therefore, I need to add a search for that particular function. And in this case, I'm going to add a rule. And this particular rule, I'm going to call local zone. E164 at domain, and I'm going to strip the domain off. Uh, I'm going to use a priority of 49 for this particular one, which will do it before the any match. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, source any. Um, I'm going to not turn on authenticated. Um, I'm going to actually do a pattern match here. So this is an alias pattern match. So we're going to change to alias pattern match. We're going to use a regular expression for this particular one. And the regular expression is going to look like this. And what this is is a begins with a digit. So it's the caret open parenthesis backslash D plus. That's digit of one or more characters. Close parenthesis at, and then I'm going to use a variable from the environment, which is the percent local domains percent, which again, that's the SIP domains that are configured on this VCS. And I'm going to go ahead and include the dot star at the end because there may be some other uh, colon port number or something that, that may have been sent on the call setup message. And I'm going to replace it with just the backslash one, which will just specify the first pattern match. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue. My target zone is the local zone. So I'm going to change to local zone here. And of course, we're going to leave this enabled. And now we're going to create the search rule. Now, since I had created a remote zone, I may want to actually add 
um, a search rule for sending calls to that remote zone. And in this case, we're going to take and call this the uh, TSBU uh, alpha zone. And we're going to just call this uh, any alias. And I like to take and use priority 100 for remote zones, 150 or 200 for firewall traversal servers, and I also like to do 50 for my local zone. That takes and prioritizes my local registered devices over remote zone devices. And I'm going to just allow the VCS to go ahead and search all of those. The search is relatively quick. Um, and doesn't take a whole lot of time, so I might as well just go ahead and do this so that I search local before I go remote. So in this case, uh, we're going to take and use the any alias, and we're going to continue, and our uh, target zone for this particular one is going to be the TSBU Alpha VCSC, and that's my remote zone, and I'm going to leave the priority of 100 there, and I'm going to go ahead and create the search rule. Now, I might want to also be able to dial an IP address. IP addresses are treated differently than aliases and patterns. So therefore, we're going to create another search rule, and we're going to allow IP address dialing on my local zone. So this is where I'm going to put local zone, and I'm going to put address, IP address dial. And remember, the priority for my local zone is going to be 50, so this is not going to compete at all with the any alias because if it's an IP address it's not going to be an alias and if it's an alias it's not going to be an IP address so there's no conflict there I'm just gonna go ahead and use the priority of 50 uh, my any source and I'm not going to pr um, make a authenticated and this time I'm going to say any IP address I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna tell it to use the local zone as my target zone and I'm gonna leave it enabled and now I have created all of my search rules. Really, I want to take and use less search rules, the better. If I can allow things to happen uh, where I'm searching for things like, for instance, uh, E164 at domain without actually having to specify a whole lot of extra digits uh, in these uh, pattern matches, uh, then that's actually the better. Uh, otherwise, it becomes very difficult to debug this in the future. Okay, now there's one other thing, uh, and that is some advanced stuff. So this is not in the basic configuration, uh, but there is uh, the ability to use a remote policy server. We are not going to configure a remote policy server, but if there is one configured and you don't understand what it is, you might want to delete it or figure out what it is, um, but this is more for advanced configuration. Thank you, and um, we're going to advance to part three applications, but thank you for joining me for part 2B.